Hello Dunlap family! Welcome back to How to Steal a Dog. We are now on chapter 19. I stared up at the stained ceiling tiles of the school nurse's office, trying to make my stomach settle down. For once, I hadn't lied to Mr. White. I really did have a stomach ache. I'd had one ever since I'd left Camello's yesterday. I had left her house and gone on back to the car. I knew I should have gone over there and taken care of Willie, but I didn't. I guess I was hoping Mookie would share his liver pudding again. When Mama and Toby came back, I pretended like I was doing my homework, but I wasn't. I was writing one word over and over. Lily, 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 Lily. And then, after Mama fell asleep, I didn't tell Toby that Carmela was getting the reward money from her Uncle Haywood. I didn't say that now. It was time to take Lily back and get that money. I kept it all inside me where my aching stomach was. Finally, I took out my How to Steal a Dog notes. I read all the way through them, starting with step one, finding a dog, and ending with step seven, and the part about stirring and stinking. I turned to a clean page and wrote April, 30, April 28th. Then I added, step eight. If you want to, you can take the dog back and tell the owner that you didn't want the reward money after all. Here is what will happen if you decide to do that. One. The owner will be really happy and she can give the money back to her Uncle Haywood. Two, the dog will be happy because he is back home where he belongs instead of on that nasty porch. Three, you will be happy because you won't feel bad about stealing a dog, even though you still live in a car. Number four, when you stop stirring, it will stop stinking. Or you can take the dog back and get the reward money that you planned. That is the decision you will have to make. I drew tiny little paw prints all around the edges of the page before I closed my notebook and put it away. And now here I was in the nurse's office staring up at those ceiling tiles with my stomach aching like anything. When the bell rang, I told the nurse I felt much better, even though I didn't. And I made my way through the pushing, shoving kids down the hall. Outside, I found Toby and we headed over to the old house. The whole way there, Toby kept jabbering on and on about stupid stuff like how his teacher had hollered at him for doing math with a pen and how some kid's gerbil got loose and went under the radiator. As usual, as usual, he was lagging behind, but I hurried on ahead. I needed to get to Lily fast. I needed to snatch him up and hug him, and then maybe my stomach ache would go away. As we hurried up the gravel road, my thoughts turned to Mookie. I sure hoped he was gone. I didn't need his crazy talk that made me feel so squirmy all the time. When we got to the house, I left my backpack by the road and pushed my way through the bushes toward the back. I rounded the corner, and the first thing I noticed was that Mookie's big blue tarp was gone. The little clearing where his sleeping bag had been was empty, just a pile of blackened wood and an empty soda can. Then suddenly, it hit me. Silence. Total silence. No happy little bark from Lily. I ran over to the back porch and yanked open the rickety screen door and wanted to die right then and there. Willie was gone. I must have looked like a crazy person racing around that little dirt yard, pushing aside the weeds and bushes and hollering Willie's name. Toby kept saying, what's wrong, Georgina? And what happened, Georgina? Then he started bawling about Willie being gone and I hollered at him to shut up. I ran to the edge of the woods and called Willie's name till my throat ached. The quiet that came back to me felt solid and mean, like a slap across the face. I hurried back out to the road, not even caring about the briars that were snagging my clothes and scratching my arms. I ran up one side of the road and down the other, peering through the trees and calling Willie's name. Finally, I stopped and held my aching sides, trying to catch my breath. Then I felt Toby punch me in the arm. Willie's gone, he hollered, and it's all your fault. He looked all wild-eyed and scared. My fault? Yeah! Toby stomped back up the road toward the house. I ran after him and yanked the back of his t-shirt to make him stop. It's Mookie's fault, I said. He took Willie. I know he did. <coughs> Toby's eyebrows squeezed together. Mookie took Willie? I nodded. I bet anything he did, I said. He's crazy. What are we going to do? I sat on the side of the road and put my head down on my knees. What were we going to do? I didn't have one single idea. Then, just when I was wishing that gravel road would open up and swallow me whole, I heard the chinga chinga of a bicycle bell. I looked up and saw the best sight I'd ever seen in all my born days. 
Mookie was pedaling his rusty old bicycle up the road toward us, and trotting along beside him was Willie, his string leash tied to the handlebars of the bike. I jumped up and raced toward them. Mookie stopped the bike, and I scooped Willie up in my arms and buried my face in his warm fur. Then I felt a wave of mad sweep over me. Why'd you take Willie? I hollered at Mookie. Take Willie? Mookie's eyebrows shot up. Well, if that don't put pepper in the gumbo, he said. What's that mean? I glared at him. I wasn't in the mood for his crazy talk. Means you better slow your mouth down before you start coming out with such as that, he said. I pressed my face against Willie. His hair was all matted with mud and he smelled awful. For your information, Missy, Mookie said, I was clear on over there by the shopping center when that dog of yours came running up behind me. Oh, I said. I knew I should have said more. I should have said I'm sorry. I should have said that dog's not mine. I should have said I stole this dog, but now I'm going to take him back. I finally managed to lift my head and look at Mookie. Thanks for bringing him back, I said. I wanted Mookie to say that's okay, but he did it. He just nodded. I'd forgotten all about Toby until he suddenly said to Mookie, Are you leaving? Mookie nodded again. I am, he said. He untied Willie's string leash and tossed it to me. Then he turned his bike around and pedaled off up the road away from us, leaving a wobbly tire track in the dusty road behind him. And in that instant, I knew I'd been wrong about Mookie. Well, maybe not totally wrong. He was kind of crazy. But I guess he was nice, too. And smart. And someone who leaves a good trail behind him. Mookie! I called after him. Did you fix our car? But he just kept pedaling away from us. Then, right before he rounded the curve and disappeared from sight, he gave a little wave with his three-fingered hand. Suddenly, the woods seemed quieter than they ever had before. Not a bird chirping, not a leaf rustling, just silence. What do we do now? Toby said. I looked at Willie, and he cocked his head at me and made me smile. We take Willie home, I said. When? Tomorrow. Yes! Toby pumped his fist in the air. Then we get the money, right, Georgina? But I didn't answer. I just hugged Willie. And that's it. We're almost finished with the book. Let's see here. Two more chapters. So we will finish it in another day or two. I hope you're enjoying it. I love you. I miss you. Bye.